In lesson three, we are going to be talking about shoreline and seafloor features. So the first thing I want to say before we start is like, why do people want to go live at the beaches? Why, why do, if you look at maps of the world and where people live, it's like very heavily humans have like tried to migrate towards the beaches. And even if you don't live there now, there's a chance that you've wanted to live there at some point. Humans love living at the beach because our oceans are beautiful and people love living near the ocean. It has natural resources like fish. It has um, rain. It has jobs. Um, the weather is typically nice because remember that ocean insulates us against hot and cold. Um, and it has, it's got jobs and fun things to do. So the beach is the area of deposited sediment in between the water and the shoreline. And the, and the deposited sediment can be all kinds of things. It can be um, rocks, it could be sand, um, and all, of all different sizes, depending on what gets moved there. Um, so here are some various like beach features to be aware of. This is a little bit easy for your age, but the uh, there's the beach with deposited sediment, a bay that goes, um, it kind of curves, the land curves inland. You can have shallower water. You can have a headland. A headland is an area that sticks out and there's usually a drop off cliff that's being eroded. Um, and that's because waves actually will curve inland towards a headland. And so the headland tends to get more erosion, hence the cliff, than other places. In fact, um, here's a picture. And what they're trying to show you here <laughs> is that originally there was a lot of dirt. There was soil here. It was, it was solid land. But as that water beat against... Um, this land. So remember that as this wave starts to hit this little ridge here, that energy gets transferred up to the higher waves. So that energy or the higher water, um, with, and then it curves in and makes a wave. And that wave then has a lot of like pounding energy and basically carved away this land here until you have this wave cut cliff and this soil is no longer here. Um, and you have a few like sea stacks or things like this that have held on, but will eventually be eroded away. So there are currents that run along like parallel to our shore and they will actually drop off a lot of uh, sediment and you can have a trough from those and you can have a bar from those. This is why sometimes um, you can feel this to some extent in the waters in Southern California, but sometimes you walk out and it gets pretty deep, but then you can go out another ways and it's, and it's shallow again. Um, these are the longshore troughs and bars that you are standing on. So these longshore currents drop off sand and particles as they move and doing that will basically, um, form the beach and drop off sand over time. I wanted to show you on here something really important called a rip current. So a rip current is when a longshore current, like right here, is hitting another longshore current here. And both of them together will, will have waves. Sometimes you're at the beach and some waves are coming um, in from the right and some of the waves are coming in from the left. In between those two, the water has to get back out somehow. And so they will clash and it will have a current of very fast moving water because it's all this water from both sides, very fast moving water that will speed out to the ocean. And this is like the, um, you know, like on Mario Kart, those little bars that you hit and it like speeds you forward. This is very fast moving water that's jetting that water out very fast. Um, and rip currents are very dangerous. Uh, you'll notice them because it's there's like dark, sloshed up, um, sandy water because it's picking up a lot of, um, 
water from the ocean. I want you to see that this is actually the shoreline here. And from the shoreline, this maybe looks like a little calm spot with some sloshy water out here. So some parents might say, yeah, you could go play right there. It looks really calm. Um, I want to show you a few pictures if I can. Um, we'll see if this one comes up easily. Okay. So a lot of parents, if you look from this perspective, these people are very small right here. Okay. <laughs> very small in this picture. And here you have large waves coming in this way and you have large waves coming in this way. So a lot of parents for beginners that are on their boogie boards or little kids, they're like, go play in this place without big waves. Well, the reason why that one little spot doesn't have big, big waves is because it's the rip current. It's the waves coming in from both sides. And so I see so many parents send their kids right here <laughs> that have no idea what they're doing and can't swim. And, um, you know, they go out there and they don't always get immediately pulled out to the ocean. But a lot of times I see those kids like after boogie boarding or like my own kids were kind of in one with older cousins and they're like we were swimming for a little a really long time and we weren't getting anywhere yes because you were in a rip current and you need to move down to like the bigger waves and like we said there's beaches with smaller waves in general and larger waves based on the shore bottom so maybe a you know find the beach that works better for you based on your ability but where you see rip currents will always have very sloshed up water um let me see if i can find another picture. There's some, um, let me see if this has more, obviously the rip current in this picture right here. Um, and let me see if I can find one more. Um, so they're showing the rip current here in these pictures and you can see how many people, how many people are in this rip current? <laughs> so many, way too many. And they just don't know how to identify it. They, so at any rate, watch out for that when you go to the beach. Um, so moving on, there's different sea features included, including a tombolo, which connects an island to the land, which makes it no longer an island because it's connected to the mainland. And barrier islands, barrier islands are when the longshore currents, just like a river deposits sediment, this is just deposited sediment on barrier islands that eventually um, protect the mainland. Um, and not all areas will have that depending on how the water is moving. Um, and then we're going to move on. Um, of course, there are natural human effects on the coast, um, things that we do um, that affects the coast. One of the things is building things called seawalls. These are parallel structures to the ocean that so that the ocean hits the seawall and not the people or structures up here. We also have groins and jetties that stick out and have um, that are basically to give us some break from the ocean. And then there are also breakwaters put out which are places for small boats to dock and have a safe harbor. So these are all things that we do. Now, this is another interesting to note that when we add something like this, um, it's going to affect other things down the way. So it's never like, well, we just built this and there's no effect. There's always cause and effect that something further down the way now gets eroded and taken away because you put up that block. But that wave energy is going to go somewhere and erode something else. So it's something to think about um, when these things are being built. So the sea level is changing over time. Um, We'll just stay on this picture. Um, the changing sea levels right now from 100 years ago were up about seven inches, about six and a half to seven inches um, of rising sea levels. Um, if all the ice in Greenland and Antarctica uh, melted, we'd be up about 70 meters. 70 meters is a lot. Um, you're talking about major flooding. Ever, like in a lot of places and completely changing the coastlines. Um, and then also as 
um, the w existing ocean water heats up, it does expand a bit and that takes up more space. Um, there's different uh, continental margins. That's where the land meets the ocean. In between can be a continental shelf. In the shelf, it's a shallow area uh, that can go on for a very short amount of time to, uh, you know, distance to a very long distance. Um, and it just depends in, in different, on different co continental margins. The continental shelf is different lengths. There's some great pictures here um, of some Southern California areas. We actually have a very short um, continental shelf. And then we have our continental slope where it slopes downwards. And then we have turbidity currents that flow along here and rapid flowing. I mean, like 30 kilometers per hour. And they erode, those currents erode more and more um, all the time. They carry heavy sediments because of their strength and how much speed they have, which can cause landslides here. Um, underneath. So the ocean is experiencing all kinds of erosion all of the time. So there's different features as well, like abyssal plains, which are very flat areas that go on for a while. Um, deep sea trenches. Let me show you. I have, there's a great picture here. So there's abyssal plains, which are very flat, go on for usually a long time. They have fine grain and muddy sediments and rock. Uh, that get deposited. There's deep sea trenches. So just um, trenches where it's been, you know, different currents have gone through and there's trenches, which also causes fracturing. Um, this fracturing in the back, you can have mid ocean ridges where volcanoes are there and they're forming uh, mountains. Uh, you can also have really cool um, hydrothermal vents which lets fluid out along with the magma. Here are two great pictures of that. This is called a black and a white smoker. It looks like smoke is coming out. It's not. That's actually water that's filled with different kinds of things. So um, you can find more about that right here. But this is extremely hot water, like 350 degrees Celsius, like three and a half times the boiling point of water and you know something like this black smoker is letting out metal oxides and sulfides and it is you know just letting off a lot of heat and pressure from inside the earth um then you can have seamounts and geos um these are extinct volcanoes i wanted to point out the different sediment types in the ocean you can have um, terrigenous, which is silt, clay, volcanic ash. These are all things that it's broken down sediment, um, non-living. Then you can have the bio, um, the biogenous. And this is like, if you have, oh, why is the word escaping me? Like diatomaceous earth. This is like the bodies of dead and decaying organisms that fall and they actually make what's called an ooze and the ooze is um once living organisms and it it can be packed together and sort of make sedimentary rock over the over time but a lot of people use diatomaceous earth as a very natural soil um that uh like a natural I don't know if you can, I guess you could call it a soil, but an, a natural product that will keep pests out. So you can put it around the edge of your food tent when you go camping or the edge of your house and insects that walk through it. Um, it's just a white powder insects that walk through it. It will actually kind of coat them and cut them like like glass shards. Um, I've heard it also can suck fluids out of them, but basically they die and they will not come into your house. And then you didn't add poisons uh, to the environment. You added just like a calcium powder to the environment. Um, so this is an interesting pest control. And then there's hydrogenous sediments, which are basically just made out of seawater and um, collections of that. Okay. So 
Enjoy the oceans, stay out of rip currents, and I hope you have a great week.